Hi and welcome to part 2 of the Enhanced E-Commerce series. In this video we will look into some of the important features of Enhanced E-Commerce and I'll also do a discussion like who this might be relevant for the individual features because as I said in the first video, which you should see if you haven't seen it before, um, not every feature in Enhanced E-Commerce is relevant for everyone and that's really worth noticing. And also not every feature is as easy to implement and as I said in the first video I do recommend getting help with the recommend with the implementation especially if you are in a web shop that has production data uh, that is important because implementing this enhanced e-commerce can be kind of difficult but let's jump into some of the features there is a lot of features and if you go Google about enhanced e-commerce you'll probably see them all but there is six key feature features I'd like to mention that is worth mentioning and uh, then I'll explain why that is. Uh, and who knows, maybe in the future there'll be added more features because I think Google, they really want us all to have better web shops because when we have better web shops, it's a better user journey, user experience. And that definitely means that we can pay more uh, for AdWords and that means Google earns more money. So to me, I'd say that it makes good sense for Google to implement more features that can help us in the future. So when this video is made, I would mentioned these six key features and let's jump into them. The first one, which is really interesting, uh, is register impressions and clicks on product level. And what does that mean? Well, what you can do is uh, when you have uh, a product uh, that is shown on browsing pages like categories, it's also shown in maybe brand listings, maybe it's shown in a search result, you can actually reg register all that. Meaning that you say that this product, as I said, has been, you know, um, has been registered an impression and the click on these different searches and these different banners. Um, that means you get an impression like these products rate really well these convert really well and that gives just a really interesting you know understanding of which products that uh, get the most impressions and clicks. Um, this is not the same as I'll show in the next slide which is basically promotions and tracking those but let's just talk about this one for a second. This is really interesting because uh, when you know both the search result, the browsing page and branch, you know which products that get most uh, exposure and if your most exposure product converts really bad well, there's maybe something that could be improved here. And this can give a little, very a big amount of insights, especially on the product level, that maybe some products get too much or too little exposure, and that's worth looking into. The next one is getting impressions and also clicks on recommendations and banners. Now, most web shops, especially those in the high end, uh, should have or and have recommendations. Like, XYZ has also bought this, or uh, people who bought this uh, have also bought this or even a little bit more subtle like on the front page there's a slider with some products or it could be any kind of promotion and that's uh, very interesting to, to track because not every banner will track uh, as good as others and it's really important to know that I have seen especially marketing departments spend a lot of time on some banners on the front page and when we do the tracking they realize whoa this gives actually zero revenue while the recommendations on the actual product page gives much more. And it's just important to know how much you know data, uh, and it's important to get all the data to know which banners work. And this is, this is really helpful for, for everyone who has does some kind of banners and recommendations to the website. Then there is another interesting one that is today, if you have a card, well, I put something into the basket, but that does not mean I'm actually gonna buy it. I maybe have a case where I buy a lot of stuff and every time a specific product is removed from the cart or maybe there's a product where I always go in and change the quantity. By getting more information about what people do in the cart, you can get some interesting insights uh, to what people do before the actual purchase. And that's just really interesting that we can track everything about the cart here. So when everything is you know, updated, removed, edited quantity, we can track it. And that's just really interesting. And then there's the register coupons. This could be two things. First, it can be some kind of gift code you give out. Uh, that's one way. But what it's, what it's really meant for is, um, let's just say that you want to run a promo. Like this is, uh, you know, spring break, and we want to give a spring break coupon. Then you can actually track, like, how did it work? Did it convert well? And all these really interesting information. And this can not only be done in the checkout flow, it can actually be done on the product level. So you can actually track it the whole way uh, 
when people use a specific coupon. It's just really interesting if you use coupons as a kind of marketing, and it's really powerful to know what kind of uh, coupons and campaigns that actually work. And that's a big one here. That is, you can actually import uh, refunds. So unfortunately, not every customer will actually end up buying your product. Uh, that the buy your product will keep it. Some will return it. In some industries, this is very, very little. Uh, I have some customers that have less than 1% returns because it's an industry there is very, very, very few returns in. And then there's industries, especially clothes and accessories, there's a very high return rate. And it's really important to know what is your... I mean, some products will have higher returns, uh, meaning require more refunds, and there will be... Um, the revenue and profit you see in Google Analytics is not the same as the real world, and that's just a problem. This is really interesting the second you actually import cost prices. Now, importing cost prices of products is not something to do with enhanced e-commerce. This is just a different feature, and it's outside the scope of this video. Of course, if you need help implementing cost prices, just write to info at jabba.com. You'll see the slide in the end, and also the first slide. Just contact us. We know how to do it, and we can help. But the thing is, when you import cost prices and you have refunds, you actually have a possibility to see you have to see the profit inside Google Analytics. This is really powerful because you can see the actual profit of each sale you made. And if you have a product that gets returns all the time, you can see that the profit is really bad compared to what you would expect. And this is just really, really powerful data. And then the next one here is the checkout flow. You can do some really interesting things with the checkout flow now. First, you can do some really advanced steps, like that is you can do it already, but it's just more advanced now. Uh, but the most important thing to me here, you can do something called options. And with options, you can do two things, which is really interesting. First, you can track the payment methods. So you can see the conversion rate uh, on different payment methods, meaning that you can get some really, really in-depth data about what payment methods that work. And you can do the same with shipping. So if you, if I become a customer, I, you know, picked a specific shipping, or maybe I've been forced to pick a specific shipping because of some, you know, business rule. Um, we can see the conversion rate on those, meaning that we get a lot of extra information in, in details in the flow, and it supports a lot of different uh, interesting tracking mechanisms here. So it's just really, really powerful for checkout flow to get all this data. Um, again, this was the key features of uh, enhanced e-commerce. Uh, go to java.com for the full guide. There is a menu point called resources and you can find it there. Uh, and we, we can also help you implement all of this. It is kind of technical and the next video we will actually start, start talking about the implementation part. Um, but it, if you need help, just contact us. We can help a lot. Uh, but if not, see you in the next video and I look forward to help you some more.